Officers of the law who drive and mark cars. What is your best are you freaking kidding me moment that you witnessed because they didn't realize you were watching? Not a cop but one of my friends was doing it undercover stakeout at night in an unmarked car in a bad part of town. This wasn't just a unmarked Crown Vic, but a seized vehicle with heavy illegal tint. Think like a ricer mobile. While he's there looking for a person of interest in a homicide this guy walks by a few times checking out the car and just looking fishy as frick. He comes back stops by the car, tries the door, then pulls out a lockout tool and tries to unlock the car. The whole time my buddy is trying to keep his crap together as this guy is trying to jack a car with a cop in it. He draws his pistol, cracks the window and flashes his gun. The guy drops his tool and just starts freaking running down the street. He radioed in a description of the guy, didn't want to blow the stake out with an arrest, and a uniformed unit picked him up two blocks away. Guy ended up being involved in an auto theft ring and brought them all down in exchange for a deal. He had one of the biggest busts of his career just walk up and try to break into his car. Best story here. I once honked at a car who changed lanes a bit too closely in front of me. Sucker was an unmarked cop car. When that silver Chevy slammed the brakes, darted behind me, and turned into a freaking EDM show, I almost crapped myself. The officer pulled me over and apologized for cutting it close. Good for him to apologize for screwing up. We had a guy pull into a lot next to a marked squad car and light up a joint. My buddy sitting in the car had to look around to make sure he was, in fact, in a squad car and that he was, in fact, in uniform. He was. The old adage of we don't catch the smart ones never rang more true. Some guy tried suddenly coming out of a turn lane into our lane. When we didn't automatically brake to let him in he started screaming and cursing us out, even sticking his middle finger out the window, not realizing we were cops. We lowered our window flashed the badge and hit the lights and then pulled him over. The guy started crying and apologized numerous times. My little brother is really good at spotting cops, marked and unmarked. One day we were on our way to a wedding when my brother tells my mom to make sure she's going the speed limit cause she was about to pass an unmarked cop car. She is doubtful but does it anyways. About 30 seconds later a guy on a black Ducati comes flying up behind us weaving through traffic. He squeezes between our SUV and the cop and we all cheered when the cop flipped on his lights. My mom never questions my brother anymore. I think your brother might do some drugs. I was driving from Indianapolis to Bloomington one day to visit a friend on the IU campus. I was going around 70 or so, running late, and I passed a cop in an unmarked Mustang on the side of the road. He pulled out and I got ready to pull over. He got behind me and just as he lit me up a lady in a red convertible comes flying past both of us. I looked in the rearview mirror and saw a completely stunned look on his face as if he was asking himself did this car really just blow by both of us? It took him a couple of seconds to recover, but then he pulled up beside me, pointed at me while laughing, and took off after the woman. I passed them as she was getting stopped and tooted the horn twice in thanks to her. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah, you can never drive too fast on 37, especially around Martinsville, you'll get lit up by the cops. Not a cop. In college, my buddies and I lived in an especially affordable neighborhood. We all went to the bar one night, but soon received a call that there was a break-in. Got home and the cop told us he and his partner were driving by our house in an unmarked car when they saw an individual struggling to carry digital cameras, a t-shirt full of spare change, and an Xbox Plus controllers and games out of our house. The cop stopped to observe what appears to be a robbery in progress. But then the individual actually approached the unmarked car and attempted to sell the stolen Xbox to the cops on the sidewalk in front of our house that he had just robbed. They said it was the easiest arrest they ever made. I'm keeping especially affordable neighborhood, sir. I had a client that tried to race a blacked out charger when they first came out in his WRX. He was winning too, at least until the trooper turned on the lights in his grill. Had managed to get to 108 miles per hour from the line. Entrapment. I wouldn't have floored it if he hadn't taken the bait. Second police job was as a deputy sheriff and I'm sitting there with my partner off a highway exit at a scenic overlook eating some lunch and listening on the radio to CHP trying to corner two motorcyclists who are flying around the highway like idiots. 
Nowhere support is available so they terminate pursuit for safety. About 10 minutes later as I'm polishing off my 4th taco 2 bikes matching the description. And without any visible plates exit the highway and pull into the same overlook. They take their helmets off, listen for a few minutes, kill the bikes. And then the one walks over to start pee behind a tree. We made CHP transport them since that guy pee all over himself when we hit the siren. We were in an unmarked Subaru at the time. That got a real laugh out loud out of me. Well done. I'm on the other side of this one. I was cycling down a main road and had a green light to cross. And I was nearly run over by a massive black car that ran the light and turned into me. We both swerved to a stop. I immediately turned around and started screaming at the guy you freaking etc. You nearly killed me look where you're freaking going next time. The car was in marked police. The passenger side window rolled down and there was a guy in a baseball cap and a bulletproof vest sitting there holding a rifle. I kept shouting abuse at him until I realized. He just apologized for nearly running me over and kept on driving. I actually work probation. We drive grey slick top chargers with blue lights. We monitor people that are on GPS monitoring for the state. Occasionally these monitors go dead. They need servicing. Sometimes an offender says frick it, cuts the unit off and goes trolling for a station wagon full of nuns or something. Well anyway, I'm in this grey charger with blue lights because it's my week to do the GPS monitoring thing. In my state probation officers have the same arrest powers as state troopers. DNR officers or normal police only we have statewide jurisdiction. So I come across a disabled vehicle with a big Ford behind it. There's lots of traffic and this Ford is trying to get around the disabled car. So I'm like man this dude is never getting around this car. So I turn on my blue lights. Stop traffic so he can get around safely. So I'm sitting there waving the guy through when this Indian fellow comes up on my passenger side window and he says. Officer, that guy in the truck just hit that car. He was going seriously fast weaving all over the place. Then he hit that car right there I think he's drunk. At this point I'm like wait that guy? And I point to the guy I'm letting out. And he's like that's him. So I'm like god damn it. I already have my lights on so I hit the siren. Tone change and pull him over. Long story short I end up kicking the crap out of him. Cuffing him and waiting for the local smokies to show up and transport him to jail because I don't have a cage car. Turns out he was driving down the street drinking out of a vodka bottle and orange juice bottle making little mouth sized screwdrivers with his dang 4 year old in the car. The upshot for the little 4 year old was that one of the responding officers that showed up had a thick Liverpool accent. The little girl legit thought that she was speaking to the cop Mary Poppins. Super cute. You know you're an alcoholic when you mix your drinks inside your mouth. I'm a cop. In training. But wasn't in an unmarked car. Person was playing on their phone in the middle of traffic and didn't realize what kind of car was beside him. He looks up to me. Sees me. And just gives me the finger. Apparently for looking at him. Only then does he notice my uniform. Or perhaps the big white polizzery on the side of the car. My instructor didn't believe until I assured him I wasn't making it up. That guy ended up admitting it to my instructor. Probably the most expensive finger he ever gave someone. And the most expensive round of whatever they were playing on the phone. I am not an officer. However, this is too perfect not to tell. Mind you I was not speeding. I accelerated quickly and got in front of the sub beside me who proceeded to tailgate me. He was driving aggressively and I thought road raging. So I got over again and sped around a car in front of me and got over again. I made my turn and the guy was on my tail again. Suddenly he lights me over and my stomach drops. I pull over and a plain clothes officer gets out and approaches. He says sir, why were you driving like that? I am not a traffic officer but your erratic driving gave me no choice but to pull you. I shrugged my shoulders and responded you were tailgating me and looked angry I thought you were raging and tried to get some distance from you. He responded that's fair and walked back to his car and drove off. I did this once though I technically did speed and get a ticket for it. Some SUV was riding me pretty hard so I sped up to allow him to go around me. Mind you he was really really on my butt. Lit me up and gave me a ticket for it. I managed to get it thrown out in court because I included the prior 8 hours of recording on my dash cam showing my safe driving and not speeding once. Retired Sheriff's Deputy here. 
was not working but in plain clothes with my young children at in tow. We were at a local street carnival in my jurisdiction. When I watched Takanis do a hand to hand transaction of some type of narcotic. I contacted the officers on duty at the carnival. And the deputy prosecutor happened to be there as well. She asked me if I would be willing to do a purchase from one of the carnival workers. I had never worked undercover and didn't really know anything about narcotics or the street lingo. I was able to buy H and have an arrest effected almost immediately. Hey I know you are off duty and your kids are here but we'd appreciate it if you'd set a good example for your kids and go buy H off that carny. Solid undercover work sir. Not an officer but every day after high school four of us took the same three mile stretch of highway home. We frequently raced each other to the last exit and the highway was usually pretty empty. One day I drove with my buddy and he pulls up next to this blacked out Ford Taurus show and looks over going about 80 miles per hour. All of a sudden a mass state trooper rolls down his passenger window to look at us, blares his sirens, throws all of his lights on and starts ripping down the highway. He either got something important to do or was bored and wanted to frick with some kids but we definitely chilled on the racing after that. Sounds like he sized you guys up and decided that's probably all it would take to keep you from acting like idiots in the future. We had a new hire who went twice the limit, 160 in an 80 km per hour zone, and then proceeded to cut off a policewoman in an unmarked car, as he was in a company vehicle with a clearly visible logo, security company, she called us and spoke to my boss, we called in the guide to the office and I fired him. He could not believe that he was fired just for going twice the speed limit. He kept saying but this is the first time I've done it. Freaking dipshit. About a month later he called my boss and asked him for bail money for a DUI. My boss just laughed and hung up on him. He was worried his parents would get angry. Goddamned moron. Obligatory not me, but my dad. He was a detective in an unmarked car, coming back from a hearing. He was not in his jurisdiction and going 35 40 in a 35. There was a woman behind him riding his butt, which he largely ignored because he wasn't going painfully slow, in fact a bit over. She starts beeping her horn and waving her arms, swerving side to side like she was trying to find a way to zoom around him. He's also approaching the township line, putting him within his jurisdiction. Literally 5 seconds after he crosses the township line, the woman speeds around him. Funny enough. At this township line the speed limit also drops from 35 to 25. He clocks her going 55, puts on his removable police light and pulls her over. Now this is where things get funky. His car has a dash cam and records everything. This will be important soon. As he walks up to her window, she's visibly shaking in anger. He shows her his badge, explains who he is, as he is in suit and tire, not standard police uniform and tells her he clocked her at 55 and a 25. He then asks her for her license and registration, and she responds by screaming rape out the window as loud as she can. He then asks if she would be more comfortable if he called a uniformed on duty patrolman. She suddenly calms down and says it's fine. I don't remember the timeline, as I was younger, but he ends up being taken to court for assault. This woman was claiming my dad reached in her window, grabbed her breast, and said he wouldn't write her a ticket if she was willing to play ball. So my dad is mildly stressed, but has reviewed the dash cam, full audio and good quality video, with his appointed lawyer, which clearly shows none of that ever happened, and my father never even approached putting his hand inside her car. Judge hears the woman's testimony, and asks if she has told the truth. She claims she has. At that point they bring out the TV and play the dash cam. Judge informs her she should ask for leniency, and maybe she will receive a break from false charges. From my understanding, in order to avoid jail time, she agreed to a very long probation period and community service. One of my favorite, how stupid can you be, moments, and also a good lesson to not be an butthole in general. What a stupid woman. I hate when people lie about rape and sexual harassment, taking away from the real victims. I was on duty one day driving, not in an unmarked car but a clearly marked car. It was an hour before I was to go home so I had already mentally checked out pretty much. Anyways, I am driving down a road and this car zooms past this stop sign in front of me, causing me to slam on my brakes and slam on the horn literally close to hitting him. It's funny because I exclaimed out loud to myself in the car mother sucker, 
I wish there was a squad car near you butthole then I proceeded to remember I was that squad car and turned around 15 seconds later and pulled him over. Yay. Had a little justice boner that day. Getting pulled over is scary enough, but a cop walking up to question me with an erection would be terrifying. Not a cop, but I want to tell the story about what happened to my son when he was about 16. He and some friends had been hanging out at DQ. They were leaving DQ in his friend's car to go to one of their houses. They had encountered some other teenagers who were taunting them and generally being buttholes. My son was in the back seat of the car and two of his friends were up front. A dark colored sedan pulled up next to them at a stoplight. Kid driving says to front seat passenger it's those buttholes again. Do something front seat passenger grabs a shoe and chucks it at the car's windshield. Well, guess who was actually driving that car? LOL. I got a friendly call from the PD to come pick up my kid, along with an assurance that he hadn't done anything wrong but had really, really stupid friends. The cop made some kind of quip as I was picking him up about Grand Theft Auto Skinny Jeans Edition. Comma the cop made some kind of quip as I was picking him up about Grand Theft Auto Skinny Jeans Edition. That's too funny. At least they took it in stride and didn't arrest his friends and throw them in jail for 3 years like al -Zaidi. I'm a cop and nothing really changes. You would be surprised the stuff I see in a marked patrol car. Some people are just that oblivious or just really don't care. Yeah bad drivers or idiots aren't going to notice the marked Tahoe on the shoulder. The marked cruiser the lane over. Whatever. They're so self absorbed they'll just do their thing. We had a deputy get hit when someone cut across three lanes. Clipping his marked Crown Vic in the process because they wanted to pull in front of someone else and flip them off as part of a road rage incident. Obligatory I am not the officer but, I was driving on a 50 mile per hour limit dual carriageway, and a nice fellow with a horse box attached to his pickup decided that 0.2 inches behind my car on the inside lane was a nice amount of stopping distance for himself. Then he decided I wasn't having enough fun with just music, so proceeded to flash his lights, repeatedly, rave time, a turn off approaches, so horsey mcfuckhead takes it, then decides to cut across back onto the motorway in front of me, across the chevrons, forcing me to swerve into the outside lane lest my car be written off by his clearly occupied horse box, then it happens, the angelic humming of a siren, the majestic flashing blue lights of karma, and marked police car flies over from a little while behind me, chasing the now speeding probable horse sucker. I pass them about 5 minutes later and tooted my woefully inadequate horn. Because I could. I was a detective off duty with my family when a jackass started following me way too close. I sped up and he did too. He pulled up next to me and he's driving a crown vic with a full police lights package and the words test vehicle on the door. He's clearly upset. Turns on the lights and motions for me to slow down. He picked up a radio mic and looked like he was talking into it. I was inside of my own jurisdiction by now and called dispatch to see if they knew who this dude was. Nobody knows. Meanwhile, test vehicle turns off the road behind me to a shopping center. My wife sighs heavily as I turn around and spot him getting out of the car, wearing a sweet pair of cargo shorts. I calmly took down the tag and arrived early for work the next day cause my normal caseload was going to take a break for Mr. Test Vehicle. Found out he was not a police officer but a salesman for police vehicle lights. Stroked out a warrant for impersonating a police officer and locked him up the same day. When I went over to the jail to talk to him he told me that he gets angry when people speed around him when he's driving that car. He wasn't the pervert cop impersonator type so he got a slap on the wrist but his employer was P when I told them. I'm a cop in Ohio, and I was driving a 2011 Hyundai Elantra. The police paid for it so it was really nice inside. Leather, extra speakers, etc. One day when I was out on patrol listening to some cop rap, a guy drove past me with speakers so loud that I could hear the song, Reba McIntyre, over the cop rap. So I blooped him with the siren and pulled him over. I walk up to the car and ask him what he's doing, and the tinted window rolled down, and it was Reba McIntyre. I was completely stunned, and I said I'm sorry, but a ticket's a ticket. She grinned sheepishly and said that's fine, you're just doing your job. It was one of the highlights of my career before I retired. Family member's story. A detective who drives an unmacked car, a shitbox actually to really blend. 
has seen deals, crimes in progress, but this stands out best. My cousin is a lousy driver by nature. One particular night he was being tailgated, high beamed, etc by an unhappy motorist behind him. He pulled into a gas station to let bin pass but the unsuspecting jerk followed him. You got a freaking problem. Buddy he yelled to my cousin in a thick accent. My cousin gets out in the punk look and nervous while the detective replies nope. But it looks like you do now. And flowers his badge. Arrest for driving a car with revoked registration. Driven without a license possession of drug paraphernalia. Along with citations for his actions before the confrontation. Just let it go when driving. Always baffles me that when you are already driving without a valid license and drugs in your car, that you would go out and behave like a moron too. Not an officer, but the idiot in the story. I was 17 and thought using a pigeon. Fast car you follow behind in the hopes they get a speeding ticket and not you. On the highway was smart. So I followed this charger in the fast lane going well over the limit. Followed him for a good 20 minutes before he quickly went in the right lane. Slowed down and pulled behind me. Then he turned on his sirens. I was following an unmarked police car. The pigeon strategy doesn't even make any sense. If you're behind them, you're easier to pull over. Okay, I am not a cop. The car was not in marked. That's why this is so are you freaking kidding me. Scene. Bridge over the interstate. Left lane enters the interstate. Middle and right lane go on down the road. Cop sitting in right lane with lights on as he sometimes does. Nearly the entire bridge is solid white line for that left turn lane to prevent people trying to cut in at the last moment. For people who don't realize and have missed the turn there is a very easy U-turn area right past the bridge. Some prick who I would have sworn was blind if not for the fact he was driving a car, was at the end of that long wait for the left turn. He shoots into the middle lane, cutting me off, drives the length of the bridge, and pulls up to the light in the middle lane and stops, puts on his left turn signal. I am stuck behind him as he waits for the entire light. No one is letting this dumb frickin', this isn't that kind of city, and he clearly just didn't want to wait his turn. Not to mention the whole solid white line and easy U-turn area after the light. He could have just gone past the light and pulled a U-turn. There is a designated space for it. But no sorry Bob. Not good enough for him. So I am sitting there. Having waited the entire length of the green light for this prick. Oh and the reason the line wasn't moving is the left arrow had gone red 20 seconds before he pulled his cock baggery. Looking between the now yellow light and the cop who is staring at this guy. The light turns red. The guy then proceeds to very slowly pull out and turn left from the middle lane going through the red light. The look of utter incredulity on the cop's face as he turned on the siren and immediately pulled him over will be with me forever. Still Petey made me miss the light though. The justice boner was worth it though. Two unmarked cop cars busted me doing donuts in an empty snowy parking lot when I was 18. They were in the far corner and I didn't think much of it. After a few minutes of driving like an idiot they finally flipped the lights on and drove over. They kinda laughed at me and gave me a stern talking to but let me go. That's the right kind of policing. You weren't putting anybody in danger. Good on them. Not a cop but still a good story. I was driving home from work on a four lane road. In the left lane coming up to a red light. Naturally I came to a complete stop. At the lights I notice that there is a late model Impala in the right lane with his window down. Then out of nowhere an older boot passed me on my left. Crossing into the oncoming traffic and through a red light. In complete dismay of what had just happened I looked at the guy next to me who was already staring at me with the same stunned look on his face. So I said to the guy where's a cop when you need one the guy in the Impala said to me right here he then threw on his lights and speed after the book. Once the light turned green I drove up the road about 20 feet to see the undercover officer had pulled over the book. I gave him a honk of my horn and he threw up some finger guns at me. Not a cop but I was the other guy. I was out ripping around on my jet ski with some friends. There was no one around. So we were darting through the shallows and between islands where we legally cannot run. Must be 100 feet from shore to run at speed. These channels were 10 feet wide. We're having a great time when I see my buddy coming down the river on his call asaki. I decided to buzz right at him and do a donut to spray him with water from the jet. Right as I cast the handlebars and started to spin, 
I realized it wasn't my buddy. It was a PA game commission officer on a brand new jet ski that they had purchased discreetly patrol the river. I soaked him. I got a lot of tickets that day. From the other side of the story. I was driving along and this butthole behind me is right on my butt. So I speed up a little. Then he's trying to pass me. And since he was being a jerk. I speed up or slow down accordingly to not give him a chance to pass me. Finally, the lights come on. It's a cop. He asked me why I was going so fast. And I told him because he was riding my tail. He asked me why I would do that in front of a cop. And I said you're in an unmarked car luckily he was just north of town and out of his jurisdiction so he let me go. He's now the chief of police in that town. I have a similar story about a cop aggressively passing me and immediately turning right onto a side street in an unmarked cruiser. I nearly hit him due to him cutting me off and immediately slowing down and had to swerve into the left lane as not to. The cop, in plain clothes, actually had the nerve to turn around and pull me over asking why I was tailgating. What? Sitting at a stop sign in front of a school when lady speeds through said stop sign doing 50 in a 15. I pull her over and give my usual line. Is there perhaps a medical or other legally justifiable reason you ran that stop sign in from of a school doing 50 miles per hour? She says I'm having a miscarriage. No she wasn't but. So I tell that she's in luck. I'm a trained medic and I'll get an ambulance. As the ambulance is en route, the dispatcher tells me the ambulance crew wants to know if she's bleeding. She's heard this on my radio and I tell my dispatcher stand by. It's hot and we're in Texas. She's wearing very short shorts so I stick my head all the way in her car look down at her crotch. Then back at her and say I guess not. Ha. Huh. Still waiting for that ambulance and she grabs her cell phone and calls her husband. They are taking and she hands me the phone and says it's my husband can you tell him why I'm going to be late. Late? Thought it was a miscarriage. So I grab the phone and only tell the guy your wife having a miscarriage. I'm so sorry for your loss and immediately hung up the phone. The look on her face was priceless. Ah. Good times. She was so pee. I can't imagine how that conversation went when she got wherever it was she was going. Plus the ticket for speeding and the stop sign. And the ambulance bill. About $1,500 total. Play stupid games. Win stupid prizes. Obligatory not a cop. However, on my way to work, getting off the highway there is a left turn lane and a right turn lane. No lights. And no other options. The left turn lane is where everyone wants to go and usually does move pretty fast but still will pile up during morning rush hour. The right turn lane is very clearly marked. Yield around a smooth corner, wide painted triangle, collapsible bollards, the whole shebang. I go to turn right this one morning and this car in front of me decides to skip the 15 cars trying to go left and turns left from the right turn only lane. They sped around in unmarked black SUV. Who immediately whipped on its lights and I went to work with a huge justice boner. Police of Reddit. What is the absolute worst crime scene you've come across? Saw a little kid standing on a busy street corner, in the dead of winter, around 2 or 3 years old. Went up to him to talk to him and found out he had been standing out there for an hour or so while a good Samaritan kept eyes on him from across the street in his nice and warm house. Eventually led the investigation back to a battered woman's shelter nearby. The manager recognized the kid and said his mom was upstairs in another room. Went up there and found out she died from a rage overdose a few days prior. Broke my heart to think that kid had been in that room with his dead mother for days with little food or water. Probably crying that his mother wouldn't wake up or talk to him. Dunno whatever happened to him after that. Lost kids are common in my city. But this one wasn't just the forgetful tourist who didn't keep track of their kid while they snapped photographs everywhere. Was intense for a while. As we pulled resources from neighboring counties to put out the alerts for a priority lost child. See. No one explains how stuff like this can affect you when you let it into your life. No one warned me. And freaking heck. Yay. Holding my babies is the only thing that really helps. <laughs> Journalist. Not police. But I was often at the same sorts of scenes. 1. Partial decapitation in a car accident. A drunk kid hit a small car at high speed. Tore the top completely off. Driver's body was still heaving and convulsing in the front seat. Brains and tongues splattered over groceries in the back seat. 2. Hugely obese drug dealer goes into his attic to retrieve his stash. This is in Georgia in the summer. 
collapses from the heat and dies. Takes neighbors a few days to notice the smell. Takes a few more before they figure out where, exactly, it's coming from. The police had to cut a hole in the roof of the house to pull his bloated corpse out. He fell apart into goo as they were doing it. The smell was insane even a quarter mile down the road, once the roof was opened up. 3. Woman who had been killed by a serial killer. Unofficially, the cops on the scene said they had seen this sort of thing a number of times so they thought it was a serial killing. Was never proven. She was a prostitute and he had beaten her to death and then tightly packed all of her orifices with dirt before dumping her. 4. Train vs car. A mom tried to beat a train with her kids in the car. Train was too fast. When I got to the scene there was a child's head just sitting on the ground. Completely normal except for the fact that his was detached and the body was nowhere in sight. People who try to beat trains are idiots. I'm no cop. But my stepfather wanted me to tell his story. Here goes. My father got a call about a car crash. Usually they're pretty bad. But this one was the worst he'd ever seen. The car had two parents. And four kids inside. The parents were pulled out immediately. And neither had serious injuries. They were both understandably scared about their children. So he put on some rubber gloves and went into the flipped car. All of them were dead. And none were clean deaths. The youngest spine was protruding from his back. And the oldest was missing most of his head. Another had his face mangled by debris. And the last one was cut in the abdomen by his cest belt. And there were a fair amount of organs hanging out. He had no clue what to do. He didn't want those parents to see that. So he wrapped them up inside of the car. When the mother saw the smallest one come out in a bloodied blanket. She fell to the ground and just. Screamed. The father walked up to grab the child. And my stepfather just said sir. I don't think you want to see this. And the father just started to wail unlike anything my stepdad had ever heard. I'm so sorry. He choked out. And after they'd taken the bodies. He was there to clean up and investigate. While he was searching. He found a small bloody socks sitting on the ground he told me it was the only time he'd ever cried on the job in his words i've seen grown men blow their brains out i've seen people beat their spouse until their face was mush heck i even had to reach into someone's chest cavity once to resuscitate them but i'll never forget those kids god bless your daddy i hope he finds peace i'm not in law enforcement but ended up working very closely with them on one case that presented to Maya. A newborn infant had been microwaved by her mother's boyfriend because she wouldn't stop crying after he sexually violated her when changing her diaper. The baby's uncle found the baby, and got enough neighbors gathered to set the boyfriend on fire. Police came in first with the baby. They gave me a heads up that the boyfriend might follow but they decided to wait for ambulance to show up and transport him probation officer for violent sex offenders here i've got a few i could add to this but this one sticks with me as the worst a doctor in the children's department at a very popular hospital was raping the preteen terminally ill girls during the night shift this went on a couple times a month for years before he was finally caught one of the girls lived longer than the doctors expected and complained of pains during an inspection they discovered the rape and posted cameras which eventually caught him he ended up getting probation because he a could afford great lawyers who got him in front of a sympathetic judge and b most of his victims were dead. He'd up the pain meds before the act so that there would be less resistance. The court never knew the extent of his deviance, but after I finally got his polygraphs back we learned the full story. He eventually died in custody after we got him on a violation. I'm not a cop. But a good friend of mine is and he recently told me a story. A few weeks ago he got a call to a homicide. A 25 year old male had killed a 63 year old male. The victim was a father to a 17 year old high school girl. The girl had recently began dating a known thug drug dealer. The girl's parents had tried to tell her she couldn't date him, but she did it anyways as an act of rebellion. Long story short. The guy stabbed the father about 30 times with a chef's knife found in the owner's kitchen after an argument ensued. The argument was over him not dating his daughter. Looks like dad was right. When my buddy, the cop, showed up he said the whole kitchen was literally covered in the man's blood. He said the corpse looked like a sliced cow carcass. Both the girl and her mother were sitting in their dad husband's blood crying hysterically. And this, kids, is why you listen to your parents. Cop here, 
Not the worst crime scene but an interesting one. I was dispatched to a call where the wife found her husband unresponsive in his office. I show up, the room is dark, and I find the man in his chair in front of his computer screen. The screen is off but I can hear that the fan on the PC is still running. Anyhow, the guy is elderly and is obviously dead. His right hand is seized up into a jacking off position and his fly is down with the Vienna sausage limp and exposed. Obviously this dude had a medical episode while whacking the weasel. At this point the wife is completely unaware of the circumstances surrounding her husband's death due to the room being dark, his close proximity to the desk, and her reluctance to approach the body. Some time passes, the Emmy shows up with body removal, and the guy is wheeled away. As I am wrapping up the scene and the wife is in another room with family, my curiosity gets the better of me. I know for a fact that at his age the guy needed some visual stimulus at a minimum to prime the pump. Remembering that the computer was on, but the screen had shut off, I reached for the mouse. When I moved the mouse, the screen turned on to holy dear god of all that is horrible on the internet. Let's get one thing straight, as a male. I have seen my fair share of what is out there in the naked world, but what popped up on that screen was about 20 open tabs of the darkest p the darkest parts of the web has to offer. What struck me most was the amount of painful looking gay torture p this guy had open. Not going to lie, at this point I felt like a teen again afraid my mom was going to walk in at any moment. I was at a crossroad. Do I break the news to his grieving wife and family a couple rooms over? Heck no. I closed all those tabs and hope this guy was browsing on private. To dead guy, I hope that I was a bro for you even though I didn't know you. And if anyone ever finds me in that same situation please do the same for me. RIP dead guy. Not in the police, but I just finished serving on a jury for a capital murder trial a couple of weeks ago. Basically a guy beat his 2 year old son to death and during sentencing it came out that he molested his 4 year old daughter as well. As part of the trial we had to view all the forensic photos of this poor kid. 84 bruises, 15 broken ribs, head contusions, brain hemorrhage, lacerated intestine, and the list went on and on. Most of the jurors were shaking with rage when we returned to the jury room that day. Your honor, we find the defendant guilty of all charges, plus some more we just came up with. We also sentenced the defendant to death by disembowelment. Um, that's not how this works. I wasn't on the call itself but was relieving units who needed a break. They were dispatched to a home after the father came home to a grisly scene. Apparently him and his wife were having marital problems. They had three kids. Not sure what the issue was but the next day after a huge argument the husband went to work. While at work the wife said I'll show him. She took his loaded shotgun and while the kids were napping shot them one by one. First the toddler. Then the middle child. The oldest woke up. She consoled him until he fell back asleep and then shot him as well. Then she left a heartfelt note about how it was all his fault that she did this. She then blew her head off in the foyer for him to find when he got home. He came home to losing his entire life. That one was one of the most disturbing and vile things I've ever experienced. I've grown to feel numb to almost anything due to this job but that one still makes me sad. I'm not sure what happened afterwards but I believe he killed himself months later. We can blame him? I'm a bit late to the party, but here goes. My stepfather worked traffic homicide for years, and encountered any number of frankly gruesome things. But the story I remember really sticking out in my mind involved a car hitting an electric pole on a rainy night. The car's occupant had, in the course of the accident, become decapitated, had sheared completely off. The electric pole was severely damaged, one of the lines breaking and falling down to rest in a puddle, which now also contained the severed head. The electrical charge was, apparently, causing the head to bounce and sizzle in a very disconcerting fashion, to put it lightly. Not completely what OP is looking for, but a horrible scene nonetheless. My grandfather's friend was a truck driver for many years, and on one night while he was driving, a car swerved across the median and hit his truck head on. Killed everyone inside the car, and to make it worse, they had just crossed into America legally so this small sedan had about 6 more people than it should have held stuffed into hollowed out places. So when he hit the car, a red mist just exploded out. He had people stuck up under the hood of his truck and it was a huge mess. Fricked him up for a while. Probably fricked up any responding officers too. 
I had an old co-worker who used to drive the 18-wheeler for our company and had a man commit suicide by walking out in front of his truck. He could no longer drive or ride in a vehicle after that, would ride his bike or walk to work. I hope your grandfather's friend ended up being somewhat okay after. I'm sure it's hard to come back from that. I once went to a scene where her ex-boyfriend show up at the house where the girl lived. He knocked and then started firing a shotgun through the door, hitting a toddler. He then went in and shot the girl's mother. I still remember chunks of flesh and underarm hair stuck to the wall. Shot the father and then left. The girl was out for the evening. He then left the gun and a suicide knot at the top of a bridge. He went on the run instead of killing himself and was captured shortly thereafter by the marshals. Fricked up scene. I posted the same story on a similar topic a while ago, but here goes. Several years ago I attended a student state police academy, ages 15-17. One of the students asked our drill instructors what were their weirdest calls. A few funny ones went by, like a trooper stopping a box truck loaded from the bottom to top. Every square inch filled with dead goats and then having to figure out who to call to make sure this isn't a health core violation. The final state trooper to respond to their weirdest call story was probably one of the more tougher, more serious and older drill instructors. At the time, he was a trainee assigned with a field training officer. The pair of troopers respond to a neighbor's complaint and were greeted at the residence by a heavily inebriated male individual, completely nude besides a small tutu dress around his waist. At this point, this imagery produced a few snickers in the group. He went on to say that the individual had an erection with blood all over, but no visible signs of a cut. Upon further inspection, the troopers found, stuffed under the kitchen table, an unconscious three-year-old, bleeding from the anus, because the inebriated individual was her father, who had just finished raping her in his drunken state. While that in it of itself is an image nobody should see, I'll never forgot the trooper's description of having to restraining his field training officer from blowing that guy's brains out. The FTO drew his firearm and put it right to the guy's head and was probably going to blow this guy's brains out if the trainee had not tackled him. That's some real emotion right there. It's easy for us to sit in hindsight and say we wouldn't have shot this guy. That's against the law, but in the heat of the moment, would you have? It goes to show you that under stress, anybody, anyone, can do anything. Also we'll never forget people's mild laughing smiles going completely stone cold serious when the story progressed. Literally like a bomb went off. For me it was like time froze. I don't remember anything but visualizing that story even though I know it was 100 degrees out. And we were all just sitting in the grass getting bitten by bugs enjoying the moment up until then. Unfortunately, for many in police fields, that's the sad reality of it. And if that doesn't send shivers up your spine, I don't know what could. God bless those that deal with these people. Sometimes you wonder why these cops look grumpy and all serious, but after a story like that I've learned to look at these people and see in their faces they've seen heck. My father-in-law is a retired state trooper. He was called to respond to the two-vehicle accident near his home. That's where he spent his final minutes with his wife before she died trapped in her vehicle. There was a post on here a while ago from a cop where some guy grabbed a baby, put it under his arm and ran at the wall using the baby's head as a battering ram. The baby somehow survived and the guy was arrested. A bunch come to mind, hard to rank them because they are all so unique. One was a 95 year old lady who lived alone and stopped answering phone calls from her son. He went to her house and found her about a week later. She died while in the bathtub. Her head was resting on the edge of the tub, looking up, with her mouth extremely wide open. She had hundreds of bugs pouring out of her eyes, nose and mouth. It was straight out of a horror movie, you could smell it from the front porch. I felt really bad for her son. No one should ever have to see their mother like that. Posting on the behalf of my friend sitting next to me. Worst crime scene I've been to was 6 month year old baby being thrown out a 6 story window because the mother believed she was possessed by the devil. Friend's dad is a cop. Keep in mind this was during a really bad ice storm a few years ago, and in the country, about a good 15-20 minutes from a town, and wasn't a very busy road. Got called from a woman saying she hadn't talked to her mom in a few days, which was weird since they talked every day. Went to go check on her, drove up to the address and saw a truck sitting in gate, got out and walked up, 
didn't see anything in or around the truck, decide to walk past. That's when I saw it. Old lady was by the mailbox. She fell into a puddle and had literally frozen over. Fire department had to come to basically burn her out. Then I decided to walk up to the house after calling in what happened. Door was slightly open. I walked in and announced myself. No answer. Walked around. And her husband had died staring out the window at her. He was handicapped and in a wheelchair. Didn't have any power in the house for a week. And didn't have a cell phone. He died watching his wife freeze to death. Dear god this is sad. This is a story I got from the local police lieutenant during an interview for a college paper. It was Halloween night, and my campus has a somewhat notorious Halloween party throughout town. Police actually walk the streets in riot gear that night, and normally get a lot of nice costumes. Dudes, anyway, they get a call to break up a fight at a house party. They arrive and are trying to push through all the drunk people to find who's actually fighting. They got to the fight which was actually taking place the next house over on the sidewalk, but a second too late. They watched as one kid pushed the other in front of a speeding tow truck, basically causing this kid's body to explode into a bloody mess. I think the kid who pushed him got involuntary manslaughter or something like that. Not police. I am a student studying crime. Went to a lecture given by the head of the missing person department in our country. It's not the worst the guy has seen. He has investigated the type of serial killers that kidnap, rape and murder underage girls in his basement, but it was the story that stuck to me the most. A 6 year old girl went missing. Search teams couldn't find the girl. All leads ended up nowhere. Eventually after 2-3 weeks of the girl being missing, they find her. Dead body in the trunk of a parked car in a random parking lot. He said that in the missing person's business this is good news. Because bad news is better than no news. After finding the body they drove to the parent's home. He said that when you drive up onto the driveway and are about to open the car door. You realize that 10 seconds later you are going to knock on their door. And 10 seconds after that they are going to open that door and you are going to destroy those parents lives. Attended scene autopsy of a 13 year old who was hunting with his 11 year old brother and accidentally shot him dead center in the back of the head with a slug meant for deer. The kid looked bad enough when I got there and had already expired, his face looked like a fassahugger if you want context. Feel really really bad for the brother as he attempted to do CPR and stuff. Obviously in a panic as his brother was likely just expelling blood everywhere and not actually still alive. This poor kid will not only remember shooting his little brother but actually seeing the aftermath and putting his face on it. Obviously far worse for the kid than anyone else. This one's a bit of a cliche, and not really a crime scene. Few months old DOA. Elderly women with no family, just two dogs. Family out of state asked for us to check on her. Got into her apartment. She had been dead a few months. Other than the smell, the sight of her eating off fingers by the starving dogs that were there. I'm going to guess you mean a cliche. A clique is a group of people. Tragic. Though, old folks living alone seems to not be a good idea. Cop friend of mine was first on the scene to the monkey ripping that woman's face off in CT. He had serious PTSD after that. I work at a police department reviewing old cases. I'd say the worst I've ever come across, so far, was an older man who was found dead in his home by his son. Doesn't sound too bad at first, until you see realize that he was found kneeling next to his bed, pants around his knees, playboy on the bed in front of him, and dong still in his hand. Dead two days and found by his son mid fap. Actually you would be amazed by how many corpses are found photographed partially or fully naked. A lot of them are found in the bathroom with their pants down. Collapsed onto the floor with poop in the toilet on the floor on the person. I'd say 80% of our untimelies are found partially naked with poop somewhere nearby. Currently just a volunteer, but hoping to hold the official title and role soon. A few months back there was a call out to someone who had jumped in front of a train. Fairly certain it was done purposefully, but no one knows for sure, and I haven't followed up on it. The lady had her legs severed, and her stomach area was caved inwards. Sort of like in those cartoons where their stomachs are flat against the road after being run over. But with more intestines and stuff that had burst out of various exit points from the pressure. Was given the option to go home for the day after that. But decided to stay. Some guy later in the day called us. 
good for nothing pigs, which made me realize how quick people are to judge us, without even knowing what we do or have to deal with, was very new to it at this point, not a good day. And police. 1. Man who had his head chopped away down to his chin by a rim head with a tobacco knife, said M head had previously been cutting the grass with the knife, before flipping his lid and removing the victims. 2. Fatal wreck where a man hit a loaded dump truck head on. His vehicle disintegrated pretty much. He slid on the pavement, grinding his legs off to the upper thigh, scattered most of his body along the roadway. 3. An elderly man died while under a heating blanket, cooked low and slow for a couple of days. 4. Lady died in a bathtub. This makes people stew. Water bodies suck. It goes on and on. They all have their little quirks that make them the worst in their own unique special snowflake kind of way. Not me by my police trade school teacher told me a story of such a fricked up crime scene he was a part of. There was this beautiful woman could have been a model. And she was naked in the floor of her hotel room her head not attached to her body and blood everywhere. The entire hotel was a crime scene and my teacher kept seeing cops sneak in to see the hot dead chick and my teacher who had command was furious. He kicked them all out and tried to do his job. Until his higher up, I think a lieutenant, came in by asking around I heard the hot headless chick was here. Since he was a higher rank the second he stepped in he took command of the scene and my teacher never did find out what happened except some cops care about seeing a hot corpse than doing their job. I'm pretty sure being headless takes a corpse from hot to not. The Icicle Man. Outside of smaller city in Idaho, Pop. 27k, is a kind of shanty town affectionately known as welfare. The only business is a little convenience store a lady runs out of her house. Welfare, it has at least a 90% unemployment rate. Anyways, it's the dead of winter and around minus 20 degrees F. Get a call about a missing persons. A man of 70 hasn't been seen or heard from in over month. Get at his trailer home and come across the following scene. Man's gas had been shut off due to lack of payment but electricity was still on. Man had water bed with an electric heater to warm the water. Looks like man had been stabbed on the bed. He rotted down to essentially a soup like consistency. His liquefied remains had dribbled off the edge of the heated water bed to form intricate icicles off the edge. The icicle man was the absolute worst. Former paramedic here, was called to a murder scene, not for the victim, but for a rookie female cop who starting vomiting and then became catatonic at the scene. A woman had killed her husband with a blast from a shotgun. He was drunk, naked, and farted right in her face at the dinner table. She got the gun, shoved it into his stomach, fired, and blew the back half of his torso away. Then, after he was already dead, she put it in his mouth, and blew his head off. The cop was unable to continue, and resigned a few days later. My dad used to work D. He told me about how they figured out the cartels used to use stillborns and orphans to traffic drugs. They would kill the kids and preserve them so that they could stitch C and H inside their bodies. They would hand the stuffed kids off to a girl that looked like a mom and they would pretend their kid was sleeping when they were crossing a border. Went on for years until a drug dog attacked one of the stuffed infants and C snowed everywhere. I was on vacation in Tokyo a long time ago. Strolling through the streets one day I came to a train crossing and several pedestrians stopped as the train approached. One guy, a mid-50s salaryman in a cheap suit, turned to me, put his finger over his lips and said SHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHHH
In my town there used to be this group of punk thugs that hanged near a JIU Jitsu gym. The fighters never stood up for themselves since they couldn't know whether or not the thugs were armed. Until one day they beat a guy up somewhat seriously. The next day the fighters got together and hatched a plan. One of them had a contact in the police, so a random search happened to apprehend any guns the punks might have. They didn't have any. Couple minutes later the whole JIU Jitsu Academy comes up and beats the living crap out of them. The thugs decided to find another place to hang in. As a BJJ practitioner, this pleases me. 1974 to 1975 ish. When I was little, about 5, my second oldest sister was married to this cockbag. They were splitting up and she moved back home with my toddler nephew. Her soon to be ex would call the house and make threats to her and about my nephew. She hadn't told my parents about this. One day, he called and my dad picked up 3 second phone at the same time my sister picked up. He heard the STBX threaten to kill my sister and nephew and to take me away until I grew up to take her place. Dad quietly told mom to tell sis that STBX needed to come over so they could talk about their marriage. Guy shows up. My dad answers and he beat that man almost dead. Neighbors called the cops and pulled my dad off while he was pounding the guy's head into the sidewalk. Dad fell in a trash bag that had a broken window pane in it. Guy had half a face left and his skull was cracked. Survived but in a mental institution for the rest of his life. Dad had to drop his drawers in front of the neighborhood to get the hide chunk removed from his butt. A mom was still trying to get to the guy while they were loading him in the ambulance. Dad pulled out his driver's license, military card, retired air force, Korean war, army intelligence, early years of Vietnam, and his assistant fire chief badge, was working at the local air force base, the one in Colorado with the jolly green giants golf balls. Dad was not put in handcuffs but was taken into CTGE prosecutor, they looked at dad's credentials, tried to pull his military file, couldn't, not high enough security clearance, listened to my dad's version of what happened, and had one of the detectives take my dad back home, he was gone for like 4 hours, that was his punishment, well, that and the scar on his butt. Your dad is into some deep military crap. Judge prosecutor knows better and believed your dad 100% at an instant rather than jumping through the judicial system hoopla and possibly tarnish his rep by being responsible for convicting an army veteran by doing what's arguably right. A kudos to the judge prosecutor, and especially your dad. My uncle is a cop and there is a guy in Philly who does what he calls freelance investigation. The problem is he is a bit of a crackpot so he lost his actual job. He's given them great information such as a 50 page report connecting a drug dealer in Camden to a series of muggings in Kensington and some other parts of North Philly because the guy visited his mother and sister at their house every Friday to Saturday which was when the muggings took place. But he crashed at a friend's in Camden Sunday to Thursday. He even included photos of the guy including a three surveillance videos putting the guy within two blocks of three different muggings. This dude followed this guy off and on for like seven months and led to an arrest and conviction and got a cash award. On the other hand he also believes that a 60 some year old woman from Chinatown who died in the mid 2000s in a solved murder actually faked her own death and runs a drug ring all because she had a drug conviction in the 70s for being caught with some dope outside a concert. His logic basically goes she was shot in her face to hide her identity. She has a history of drug crimes. Look this other Asian woman at the market looks like how she did but aged another 10 years. I followed this woman. She lives within 9 blocks of where she used to before she faked her death. Her husband is in on it because they both. Picture of a totally different Asian woman than the first provided. Went to Ikea on the same day and talked in pa. <laughs> Go make an arrest. Something that outrageous has to be true. I've made this comment before of a story my dad told me. My dad was chasing a guy down a highway that was backed up with traffic on foot. A guy with his family in the car dressed like they were on their way to church opened his car door just as the guy my dad was chasing was running by knocking him to the ground. My dad, the guy he was handcuffing, and the guy who opened the door were all laughing at what had just occurred. That scene made me crack up. Even the guy running from the cop was like lol fml. I'm a criminal defense attorney. Know a case where a widely known murderer threatened to kill his neighbors. 
the uncle of one of them heard, left straight from a funeral, walked up and shot him in the chest, ended up being found not guilty too, most gangster thing I've ever heard. CJ student, and pursing a career in corrections, when we were going over hospice in class, inmates dying, and get treated with care by others till you suffering, we learned about a man nicknamed PVT Jack, he served in World War 2, and received plenty of honors. His son got addicted to H and hung himself. Jack killed the drug dealer, and was arrested for first degree murder and sentenced to life. He was a POW in World War II, and was experienced with being locked up for most of his life at this point when he was submitted to hospice. Just watching the man acting tough while dying in that bed being surrounded with pictures of family was awful. It makes you realize how the people in prison aren't all bad people, they just make mistakes. There was a documentary on it which we watched and covered him several times as examples of not considering the people in prison as lesser than you for being there. A friend of mine told me about a case that his wife prosecuted. 70 year old woman walks in on her 71 year old husband who is blowing her grandson, his step grandson. Kid is about 12 years old. She walks to another room in the house, gets a gun, and shoots her husband once. He survives the first shot and drags himself outside onto their porch. She shoots him again in the back, killing him. The jury deadlocks on the first two trials, resulting in mistrials. On the third trial she is convicted of manslaughter and given 30 days in jail. I bet she had bigger balls than her husband. I worked in a small midwestern town nearly 20 years ago, received a disturbance call and found a heavy set 50ish white man laying in his front yard half conscious. He was obliviously involved in a fight, smelled of gas and had burns on his legs. He was probably in shock, heavy drunk, most likely both, and refused to answer any of my questions. My partner and the guy's family arrived just as he refused medical service. It was only at this point could we get a positive ID. Since he was refusing to talk, except to say no ambulance, the female relative was concerned. While another male relative did volunteer that that his uncle had just been released from prison for child molestation. The neighbors saw nothing. The victim refused to make a statement. Not much to be done. The guy was extremely lucky that we wasn't burned to a crisp. I worked for two more years afterward and there were no further attacks involving this guy. Immigration law here. Lost count the number of times a cheating BFGF has been dobbed in by their ex. You always know those ones are good. Lots of detail and always manage to get the target as the info is very specific. Used to work in a people trafficking team. Targets were mostly the sex massage industry. Legal here. But workers are occasionally trafficked and often in the country unlawfully. Had one high end brothel who played by the rules dobbin on all the dodgy ones. Worked well for him as we were pushing business his way. We would still do compliance checks on him. But we never had an issue. Another memorable one. Had a family keeping an Indian girl as a slave housekeeper. We got her out of that crap and into a woman's refuge and get her a visa. Settled in the country etc. Later. During the court case. We find out that she had been raped by the father and adult son of the house. She wouldn't take it further out if shame and the public prosecutor wouldn't proceed as she wouldn't give evidence. About a year later rescued girl's family come to visit her. Her dad sets fire to this family's house less than an hour after being in the country. I think this is my favorite one. Travels halfway around the world just to burn those M house down. Shortly after my grandfather came home to small town western Kansas after World War II a young girl was raped or murdered. He's since passed and I don't remember this part exactly, but something terrible happened to a young girl and he, with the townspeople, knew who done it, while waiting for law enforcement to arrive, which in that part of the world could take hours at a time, they happened to had found the man, brought him back to town. Wrapped barbed wire around his neck and dragged him through town by horse until he was a lifeless bloody pulp. Drug him through town in front of all to see, yet nobody was ever arrested. I'm sure when the cops finally did arrive nobody saw a thing. Back then, especially in rural counties, the town's going to protect their own. Not law enforcement, but when I was in high school a guy lured his best friend out to a remote field behind a tribal casino a few miles outside of town and beat him to death with a hammer, and subsequently buried him, because his girlfriend told him the best friend had raped her, 
There were missing person posters all over my high school for weeks before they found the body and discovered what had happened. And the guy kept showing up to school the whole time like nothing had happened. I went to a very homogeneous, preppy, safe high school, where things like this simply didn't happen. Turns out the girlfriend had made the whole thing up. I wish she'd share his sentence. Well Adlon here is a medic as well. This guy pees someone off. When we found him he was naked in the bushes, shot through his eyeball and it came out around his ear. Trauma doctor said he had multiple broken bones from getting tossed from a moving car, had been kicked and stomped on his stomach and face and to top it off he had been... Not sure what he did to deserve that, but someone got their revenge that night. Mall security, not real law enforcement. Many years ago, I was 18, just started doing security at a small mall. Third day on the job, got a call that someone had just snatched some jewelry that they were looking at, got a vague description, saw someone running through the mall out of the corner of my eye, so I made an assumption and took off running after him. Another shopper pointed me in the right direction as he ran outside. I saw him run into the dumpster storage area of a Burger King that was in our parking lot, so I, being young and full of adrenaline, ran into it too. Found the guy crouched behind a disgusting oils and fats bin. I have no idea how I did it, but I somehow cuffed the guy, with my brand new shiny handcuffs I'd gotten 3 days ago, at which point my colleague finally showed up. Adrenaline and excitement turns you into some kind of superhuman, or the guy was super submissive. We walked him back to the mall and into a service corridor to take him to the security office and wait for the police. We're halfway down the back hallway when the door from the mall bursts open and it's the owner of the jewelry store. This isn't the first time he's been robbed. He walks towards us, calm and collected, and we tell him we caught the guy and the police are on the way. Everything is good. He got a little too close our bad, and then punches the guy in the face, who has his hands cuffed behind his back. The guy drops to the floor. We lose our crap on the store owner, as he's just flicked up our awesome success. We push him away, but he's done what he wanted to do, so he's quite pleased with himself. I call an ambulance, and I still remember very well arguing with the 911 operator because I didn't know the address of the mall. It's xxxxxx center. It's a mall. Everyone knows where it is. Anyway, ambulance shows up, along with the police, and they arrest both of the thief and the store owner. The thief goes to hospital, but he's fine. Few weeks later we find out that everyone dropped the charges against everyone else and life went on for everyone. Very annoying, as I wanted to celebrate my first conviction, but it wasn't to be. I call an ambulance, and I still remember very well arguing with the 911 operator because I didn't know the address of the mall. It's xxxxxx center. It's a mall. Everyone knows where it is. Holy freaking crap that is hilarious. I get the operator's point, but dang that is just pure hilarity. My great uncle, his home is being robbed and he lives in a small farming village, at the time, and he lives with his elderly mother and sisters. He's 60 so he's the only man of the house. So some armed, knives not guns, burglars try to break in. So what does he do? He takes a bamboo stick with knives lashed on both ends, jumps out the ground floor window, and confronts about 4-7 young 20-30 year olds all armed with knives. He puts enough of a show to scare off all 7 of them. Posted this in another thread, but it fits this one better. Where I grew up several of the county cops were blatantly corrupt. Back around 86 one of the cops was accused of raping an underage girl. Cops wouldn't do anything. One night rapey cop stops answering radio. Next morning his petrol car is found with lights flashing. His uniform is freshly washed, ironed, and folded in the driver's seat. There is also this one family of old farm boys you don't pee off who just happened to have a hog farm on the same road they found the car on. The official story is he resigned and left town. But his brother hasn't heard from him since. Hogs will eat human bodies. Betting the evidence was pooped out by a pig. 
a civil in here, but here's a little wartime story from Sarajevo. When the Serbs started shelling the city, nobody was spared but a few informants and infiltrators. A while later some of these informanters started being brutally killed and or had their true identities revered by just one guy. Anyways, our wartime government didn't think killing civilians was a good idea so they went out and hunted down this vigilante. All because we wanted to show that we were the good guys. I had a DUI defense attorney, along with several others, box in a DUI driver and force him to pull to the shoulder. The DUI defense attorney then took the guy's keys and waited for me to get there. I jokingly asked the vigilante attorney if he was planning on representing the DUI driver and he responded. Heck no the driver later blew .360 on the breath test, which is over 4 times the legal limit. Goddamn. A .36 is like alcoholic territory. I blew a .24 on my buddies at a party and I was beyond fricked. My other friend's dad was an alcoholic for 40 years and got pulled over at around .30. Said he felt sober and had no problem walking. Just stank of vodka. A week ago in my city two guys broke into a house demanding money. They stabbed three of the residents but then both burglars were stabbed to death by the homeowner was a prosecutor in a somewhat rural county. This county had an area of town that was known for violent crime and M. That being said, a lot of residents had lived there for a long time. They weren't overly thrilled with how the area had developed, but were generally the kind of people who were hesitant to call law enforcement. These people started a kind of city council that would meet regularly to discuss the happenings in the area and to determine appropriate responses. Sometimes they would send bruises in to beat the crap out of someone who did something bad. This was all done hush hush without law enforcement involvement. Some officers knew a little bit about it, but it was just kinda swept under the rug as an understanding in the area. I was in a grocery store getting some lunch when I heard my partner on the radio responding to a pretty bad domestic call and asked for backup. I took off running out the store racing to my car. A kid who works at the store is all about wanting to be a cop one day and decided he wanted to come too so he raced out to his car to follow me there. I didn't realize it until I got to the house and he ran past me trying to get into the house. He doesn't talk to me anymore after the unholy butt chewing I gave him. He's a great kid but he fricked up bad that day. I've seen outsiders beaten to a pulp in Washington Heights, NYC, for transgressions against neighborhood stores or establishments. For example, a shoplifter who stole a few hats from the hat store and got into a tussle with the African guy who worked there. The entire neighborhood beat him up and all that remained was a bloodied perp and several axe handles scattered about the ground. No witnesses. TLC drivers also used to call for help in that neighborhood when one of them was victimized. You'd see a bunch of town cars converge on the spot to meet out justice on the would-be offender. Soldier, so not a cop but definitely did coin was traveling with a high-ranking officer to do talks with each person in charge of bases around Baghdad. One day we go to a base I think was called Dragon something. They tell us about how they stopped getting mortar attacks. That base was set up in one of the power plants around Baghdad. They keep getting mortar every couple of nights for the first few months they are there. Guy in charge finally gets out to the local townspeople around the base and tells them if we get mortared again I'm trying off the power for 3 days. Gets mortared that night. He had the workers turn off the power. People come to the gate the next day asking why the power is off being for it to be turned back on. Gate guards tell them it won't come on for x amount of days because someone shot mortared at the base. They turn the power back on. Get mortared a few days later. Guy turns the power back off. People come back asking complaining. This time the guys at the gate tell them it will be off for a week because they keep getting mortared. Two days later people come to the gate and say we got the guy who was mortaring your base. Come and we will show you. So they go out and about half a mile away they got a guy hung by his neck from a light pole. Dead. It had been two months since their last mortar attack when we visited. Guy that robbed a nearby store was beaten senseless by the community and held four cops. He was beaten so bad I think they arrested the guys holding him down as well. Not in law enforcement, just related to the question. In my country here is a very famous case of this. 
A 13-year-old girl was raped by a 60-something-year-old in 1998 or something like that. Don't know if he was on jail or what but in 2005 he ran into the mother of the girl in the street and he taunted her with things like how is your daughter want to come have dinner. So she saw as he entered a bar, went get gasoline in a gas station, went to the bar, doused him and lit a match. He died some days later. I'm just telling it from memory so some details might not be exact. This was in 2005 after all. I was molested in prison. I simply waited until I knew he was doing drugs again and called his PO so he could drop dirty and be sent back. Sorry you had to go through that, glad you found a creative way to handle it. Not law enforcement. Surgeon neuropsychologist worked with a patient who suffered from a mass shooting from a man who was mentally unstable. The mentally unstable man thought the young men were trying to rob him by fire. He shot them. One patient was a drug dealer. Even though the sick man was arrested within 30 minutes of the shooting and it was clear he was sick. He got out of jail 28 days before this shooting for killing a woman who tried to steal his soul. He was cornered in jail and lit on fire by the drug dealer's mates. He died because of his injuries. I treated. Both. I have a real problem with vigilantism. Recently, a friend of mine was killed in a hit and run. He was only 21. In the immediate aftermath of his death, the usual rumor mill began. Who did it? A day later, a friend of mine began to post photos of a person whom was suspected of being the driver. Photos containing him holding a beer. Specifically, the implication being that he was a drunk who killed our friend. I called her on it. She got mad at me. She was potentially compromising an active investigation and compromising justice being served in the correct for death of our mutual friend. Posting photos of an unofficially declared suspect of a crime is not only possibly slander, it's damaging to the active investigation. She was determined to be a vigilante that caught him. I get the anger and the frustration, but you can't just go and exact your own justice without due process, there's a reason it exists. Not exactly law enforcement but my great uncle was off in the Pacific theater and a group of guys accosted his girlfriend. When he came home he beat one of them to death. I actually have a story. This was in Pakistan in my village some 40 years ago. There was some dude who would go around sneaking into people's houses to mess with the girls in the house. I'm not sure if he was a rapist or not because in our culture we try not to mention things like that. But I'm pretty sure he was. One of the dads caught him on his roof and threw an axe at him and killed him. We were sat in a local car park in my mate's car. We noticed another mate's van during the conversation. But suddenly there's a loud smash as some guy breaks the window of the van. Reaches in and takes off with a backpack. We gave Jace. This dude is running flat out down the middle of the road. My mate driving speeds past him at about 45. My other mate in the passenger seat decides to open his door and clobber the guy. There is an almighty bang and this guy catapults like a gymnast tumbler. End over end. Straight through a house garden fence and smashes the front window. He staggers out bleeding from loads of grazes and cuts and starts crying like a baby. I was like, crap that was a bit over the top. My mate grabbed the bag and kicked him back on the floor. He wasn't that badly injured. But crap we sped off and told my other mate he had dropped the bag in the car park. In turns out later he knew the guy. A local sea head and had helped him out with work. Using the van and he knew there was expensive tools in the backpack. Never reported it to the police and never had any come back from it. The house was rented to students we heard and they just got the landlord to fix the fence and window. Not law enforcement. But some people nailed a suspected pedophile to a tree in a local park near where I used to live. Crap's mad fricked up. Kid from a very large and very dysfunctional family is shot with a long gun while riding his bike through the projects. The kid was more of a nuisance than a criminal but his family had some real dysfunctional characters in it. This was in the summer of about 2007. Guess who are our first homicide of 2008 was? Sorry to be posting again. But this is a good story of vigilantism. My mate was starting his property business. Had about 9 houses. He had a nightclub past. Ran a lot of doors and his family were well connected with the city doormen. 
he's in bed. Wife and kids, Albite Crash and the feral youths from the pirate end of town had put his patio doors in, they took the keys to his BMW X5 and were gone before he got down the stairs. But to make matters worse he had left all his property's spare keys, with addresses in the car and his mobile. He rings his phone and gets 5 kids, who turn out to be 15-17 years old. They taunt him, saying they are going to break into the houses. He called the police who are next to useless and just call it in as a vehicle theft. They show no interest in the threats. So they start ringing him all night and day. Eventually it becomes a sort of who's the hardiest standoff. So he gets a crew together of around 15 doormen and they find the car in a nearby town. It is being donutted around a disused shopping center. He rings the lads while watching from afar. They pass the phone amongst them, hurling abuse at him, but it gives them a chance to see who they are and who are just local kids watching the show. So they rush them tooled up. In a few seconds there are broken jaws, teeth missing and severely beaten up kids lying on the floor. This is before camera or GPS phones, so no evidence. He gets the car, keys and phone back. A few days later his phone goes and there are threats from older members of these kids gang. They are going to burn his house down. They want him to pay cash for the injuries. He gets the crew together again and finds out who this kid is. They follow him back to his parents house in the most goddamn lawless part of the city. They kick the door in and beat him senseless in front of his parents. The dad pee himself with fear and the war ended there. This might seem outrageous. But it goes on and these feral kids have no morality or limits. They only respect force. No one went to the police. My mate says they are the most dangerous people he knows and will stab someone for 50 bucks. You have to go in so hard they back down. I'm in the coast guard, a guy on a boat moored across the marina from our station shouts at people when they go too fast. He's loud as heck. I saw this when it was first posted and thought vigilantism said vandalism and I thought, that's not a very good question. Now it is I who is the dumb one. Cops of Reddit. What situation did you respond to? Only to find out it was the biggest waste of time ever? Was en route to a domestic argument between husband and wife called in by a neighbor. Screams. Swearing. Hitting. Arrived to a dude in his boxers by himself watching Game of Thrones on his surround sound. Oh man. I called once because my upstairs neighbor was screaming and slamming the walls. Thought it was a domestic but he had bought the new Call of Duty. And doing terribly. So he was slamming his controller into the wall and ground. One day, I came home fairly late and noticed my car had been recently egged. I washed it off, but on a whim, I walked up the street and noticed that car had been egged too. I walk up and see two more. It's 2.30 am. What to do? Wake up the owners? I call the cops and tell them that I need to walk up the street with a flashlight and wash all the cars. And I'm not trying to break into them but it looks like lots of cars have been egged so I don't know how far I'll need to go. It's obvious the egos are long gone. So if they get reports of a suspicious person, it's just me. I felt like an idiot. Cop showed up and paced me the whole time with his car just to make sure no one shot me or anything. I washed about a dozen cars. I guess they just ran out of eggs. Really awesome of you to do. No need to have felt like an idiot. Just a good neighbor. I responded to a sexual assault in progress in an alley. Caller said she heard grunting and what sounded like woman yelling for help. Dispatch alert turned the call and I went all out to get there as fast as possible. When I pulled into the alley, brakes were smoking and I was ready to kick some butt. I jumped out of the car and ran to the sounds, which was still intense and close by. I rounded the corner to find two raccoons straight up duking it out. I'm talking squared off, throwing punches, etc. It sounded terrible but it was awesome to watch. Not a very long or crazy one, but today I responded to a woman locked out of her vehicle. Took me quite some time to get across town. Find her in the giant mall parking lot, etc. The woman is crying hysterically when I get there about how scared she is about never being able to drive her car again. I calm her down, take a look at the car, and open the passenger door. Just, open it. She only locked the driver door on accident and didn't try any of the other doors to open the car. Sounds like a person with a panic disorder to me. Former cop. I was dispatched to a burglary in progress. A lady called and said she was locked inside her bedroom and people were rummaging through her living room of her apartment. 
she is hysterical and begging for us to rescue her. I mean she is beyond frantic. So me and my partner are racing there as fast as possible. Lights and sirens hoping to get there before she is brutally murdered. We get there, surround the apartment and I'm about to kick the door in. Then the door opens and the lady is standing there with the most embarrassed look on her face. Hair a mess, disheveled pajamas. She forgot that she decided it was hot and opened her balcony door which created the desired breeze she wanted and blew some papers off her coffee table. That was it. The wind. TLDR. Dispatch to burglary in progress. Lady is hysterical. Turns out the wind blew papers off a table. Ahahaha <laughs> I had a very similar call once but instead of the wind it turned out the guy had had a nightmare about people breaking into his house and woke up thinking it was real. Dealt with the same couple for about a year. They would call any time they were mad at each other and then lay out their full exploits. But they were mundane. She takes pens from the bank. He speeds on main street. She had sex with 17 year old when she was 18. No assault ever occurred. No abuse. Just two people who didn't know how to break up and wanted us to fix it for them. I'm a dispatcher, not a cop. But I once had to send an officer out to a lady's house because she had left town that morning and suddenly couldn't remember if she'd closed her refrigerator door before she left. The call came in at like 1am and she wanted us to send someone out to look in her windows to see if the fridge was closed. And possibly break in to close it if it was open. To which we said no freaking way. An officer was sent. The fridge was, in fact, closed. My fiance is a cop and told me a story about someone calling the police because they were locked out of their house. Upon arriving to this ridiculous call, who on earth calls 911 and not a locksmith? It turned out that they were not locked out of their house but rather they were locked out of the bedroom. There was no child or pet or hazardous item that was locked in the bedroom. They calmly explained to this person that being locked out of your bedroom is not a police matter and advised that they call a locksmith. In San Francisco, I've been told the fire department will respond as long as they have nothing else to do and break into your house and unlock the door just for practice. Not a cop, but the cop did say well this was a waste of my time, so it's probably close enough. I used to work at a horse board barn, a couple big barns, a few pastures and we had a 16 acre pasture across the street that we turned brood mares and retired horses out on. One day after lunch I walk out and there is a cop car sitting in the driveway. I sort of blink at it a bit and wonder if the cop is going to get out and come up to the gate or something. It was kinda surreal. Finally decide I should go out and ask if I could help him with something. The first thing he says to me is I'm pretty sure this is a waste of my time. Turns out someone called in and said we had two skinny horses in a mud lot, with no access to water, and they were pretty sure one was dead already. I just looked around at the, probably a bit too plump if I'm honest, happy horses wandering around the pastures, which were admittedly muddy, because it rained, and shrugged. The cop just shook his head and told me to have a good day. Also, just a general sir, horses will sleep laying down. If you see a horse laying down, don't be too concerned. Yes, they will look dead. Watch to see if they take a breath, respirations only about 10 breaths a minute. Some people think that if you can see any slight rib outline that the animal is starving to death. Source, greyhounds, also rather plump for the breed but still ribby. Used to be a cop, answered a call from an old lady who claimed someone broke into her house and stole the insides of her cuckoo clock. My ex's grandma had gone through a phase of calling the cops frequently because she thought someone in the house. Eventually they figured out she was having hallucinations of sorts for having lived in a war zone in her youth. So every day before bed, my ex would have to search her house and declare it clear, otherwise she would have a panic attack. Cop here. Honestly 95% of calls. There are just two men to pick an example. The biggest reason is that people think our job is general problem solving. Having an argument with your roommate? Just call the police. They'll take your side so you can win the argument. Everyone knows that we automatically have to be on the side of the 911 caller. See a guy walking down the street? Well, since you've never seen him before, call the police just to check it out and make sure he's not a murderer. This is why I'm always amazed when I hear horrific stories where no one called the police. Well I heard her screaming and gunfire but I didn't want it to bother anyone. 
Like trust me, the police want to hear about the actually criminal activity. Don't be shy, they get way dumber calls. Not an officer, but about 12 years ago, my teenage brother and mother were watching my 3 year old daughter during the summer. They bought a small plastic pool for her to swim in. She loved it so much that she was squealing with delight in the backyard. The neighbors called the police saying someone was beating a child and she was screaming in my mother's backyard. Everyone got a huge laugh out of it when it was exposed that an infant was swimming for the first time. This is the kind of wholesome that I need more of in my life lol. Glad that it got settled though. I don't know if it's boring enough to be a waste of time, but I was doing a ride along with an officer and we responded to a call that was reported as a drive-by. Ambulance hauled off the victim shot in the leg, and 10 cruisers were canvassing the area for the supposed blood trail when the guy claimed to have limped to his apartment. Ladies and gents, play back that 911 call. A woman called, muffled out what do I tell them, to which someone replied, saying he got shot by someone this was overspoken by the dispatcher spiel, so it was missed by the dispatcher, yep. 10 cars of wasted time for a guy that later admitted to messing around with a loaded gun and shooting himself. Caught falsifying a report and an impeding charge just for the heck of it due to 2 hours of wasted time. All trying to save his dignity. It oh boy. I'm not a cop anymore due to medical reasons but it's hard answering this question with only one story. I'll try make this short. We went out to this house on a domestic because a woman and her husband were getting into it and arguing. They said they weren't physically fighting but when I got there I thought differently because of the amount of crap thrown all over the place. The male half had some bleeding above his eye. So I'm talking to them and of course they're giving me conflicting stories like they always freaking do. And the woman says something along the lines of, I just had it I freaking snapped and threw the dang fan at his face now this is one of those big fans with maybe like a 4 feet pole as a stand, used usually for an entire room, can't think of what they're called right now. She said that when they were arguing she went into the living room to get away from her husband, sit down, and cool off. But the dude comes over with the fan, positions it next to her face, turns it on, and proceeds to fart into the fan. So she flipped. I look at the dude and he's just kind of standing there, giving me that face of guilt like he's acknowledging the fact that I'm judging him but he's too embarrassed to vocally admit he did in fact fart into the fan to pee off his wife. Firstly, they were both in the late 30s, and this is was the reason why I'm at their place. Secondly, she just admitted to assaulting her husband so unfortunately she's got to go to jail. I wouldn't say that the call itself was a waste of time. It was a genuine domestic with an offense we could charge. But the circumstances that led up to it were freaking stupid. So next time it takes them forever to get to your house for your theft report or whatever. Remember that people like them exist and keep us busy. Not a cop or a firefighter. However my parents live across from an older lady who is the self-proclaimed neighborhood watch. She has called the non-emergency line for the local police station so many times that she is not allowed to call that line anymore. The only way she can get a hold of the police is to either call 9, 1, 1, in an extreme emergency or actually drive to the police station to make a complaint. This woman is a terror to their neighborhood. She reports to the cops the most useless crap. My favorite complaint that she has ever made was the time that two stray cats were doing it in her driveway. This woman took pictures and a video of the two cats doing their thing instead of going out there and trying to get rid of them herself. She printed out the pictures, put the video on a CD and brought it to the police station in the next day. Obviously the police couldn't do anything about it. The best part of this story is the one cop that she complained to put up the picture in the common room so everyone could have a good laugh at it. We know this part, because my parents have become really good friends with the cops over the years of living across from her. Oh man, I live next door to a woman just like that. The local authorities all know her by name now and no one can take her seriously anymore. Still a cop. Generally the wealthier district is where the dumbest calls come from. I was once dispatched to a call in said district where a woman was locked inside of her car. The driver door wouldn't open. However literally every other door would. She wasn't particularly out of shape. She just didn't put it together that she could crawl out the passenger side. At first I thought she was intoxicated but after talking to her a bit I realized she just wasn't very bright. I feel like at that point someone shouldn't have a license. 
I was the dumb caller. I was home alone in my dad's house when I smelled gas from my room. I went to the stove to find out it had been on, and I turned it off. Everything still smelled like gas so I hid outside and googled house smells like gas which of course turned up results like there's a gas leak call the cops now. I called the cops, and I actually forgot my address and they had to find me. When they did show up, they couldn't find any gas because I'd opened all the windows. I was feeling pretty embarrassed for wasting their time at this point, but then it got worse. I was a minor, and after calling I found out they couldn't legally let me go without an adult to take custody of me. That, or they could discharge me to a hospital. I tried calling my dad, but he wouldn't pick up the phone. My sibling who lives with me wouldn't either. The only person who answered was my sibling who lived 30 minutes away. So an ambulance and a cop car had to wait with me for 30 minutes because I freaked out over a stove. The morning after, my dad texted my sister asking where I was. Not dumb at all. You could have died in an actual gas leak. Better say than sorry. Don't be afraid to call for help the police. A police officer. 1% actually stopping crime 40% solving other people's problems and the rest of it doing paperwork on the first two. Police dispatcher here, and I would have to answer this with a simple two stroke three of the calls that come in are a waste of time, but we have to entertain them. I have two that come to mind. First was an older lady calling BC during the winter the neighbor's snow plow driver was pushing the snow onto her lawn and she didn't want the extra snow on her grass. Second, and this happens kinda frequently, is for the black person walking down the street. And apparently this black person shouldn't be here BC they live in an upscale area and don't see these kind of people around here. And this is on top of all the domestics that are basically calling for a cop to come babysit them and make it right. <laughs> Obligatory not a cop. My brother became a cop later in life. Before that he was a mechanic and owned his own small business in the town he lived in and later became a cop in. He sold his business once he became a cop and during his first couple months on duty a call came in because someone's car had broken down on the side of the road. I bet you can guess where this is going. The dispatcher asked if they were hurt or in any danger. No. My car just broke down. Can you send officer, brother's last name, to come take a look at it? He's my mechanic. Technically it wasn't something he responded to. I don't think he was even on duty that day. But definitely don't call 9 one, one, to come take a look at your car. He got a lot of crap for it at work the next day. Not a cop. But I bet they thought a call my friends and I made was really stupid when it came in. When I was around 13 I was staying at my friend's house with two other people. One girl somehow got her hand stuck in the garbage disposal. We tried everything we could think of to get it out. Ice, hot water, cold water, oil, and a lot of other things. We were there alone. And this was before cell phones were popular. So we couldn't get a hold of any of our parents. After I think about 2 hours, we ran out of ideas and called the cops. They asked us a crap load of questions before finally sending out a cop. Cop showed up, realized it was legit. Had no idea how to free her hand, and called for backup. Three more cops and a fire truck later, her hand was freed. Not a cop but a retail manager. Had a customer call the cops because his appliances were on back order and there was nothing I could do to make Samsung get them to us any faster. He had the cop come to the store to force me to do something. The cop was visibly bored and asked me what's going on and then said, Well he has obviously singe everything he can and or looks like you either need to wait or cancel the order. Customer waited another week or so until delivery. I choose to interpret that to mean the customer waited at the store for a week for his alliances. When I was 6 I was mad at my dad so I locked myself in my room and called the police. Hung up the second I heard a voice on the other line but they dispatched two officers anyway. They show up at the front door. Much to my dad's confusion. Come into my room and say something along the lines of hi there. You okay? Did you call by accident? Have a good night. Then I ran and cried and said sorry to my dad cause I thought he was going to go to jail. So I imagine those cops were fairly bored with that giant waste of time. Or relieved you were okay. I got a flat, and someone called the police to check out the suspicious car that earned me a cop, fire truck and an ambulance while I was swapping out my flat. Obligatory not a cop. But, when I was a kid, 
My mom called the cops because she heard popping sounds she thought were gunshot in our garage. She rushed my brother and I into the car, in the driveway, and waited for the cops. Turns out, she forgot a case of Diet 7 up in our garage and the popping noises were the cans exploding. Not a cop, but had a woman call the police on me for not turning the air conditioner down at the restaurant I was working at. It was locked, I didn't have the key, key holder was owner who was out of town called and said I was trying to assault her by heat. No freaking lie. Cops showed up, heard 30 seconds of her story, looked at me and told me to tell her to leave and never come back and they would happily come back to enforce a ban if she ever tried to come back in. BTW. It was July in Arkansas. 101 degrees with 90% humidity. No air conditioner my big sweaty butt. The heat in Arkansas is assault. It's assault that is worse than beating your grandma with a tire iron. I was a caller that time, my landlord owned the house next door, but it had been empty for over a year. One night I saw a light randomly bobbing around inside the house, no other lights were on, nobody in the driveway, knowing the house was empty, and knowing the landlord would use the room lights and not a flashlight, I called the cops. I was in an upscale neighborhood, they responded within 3-4 minutes, turned out to be headlights hitting a window just enough to imitate someone with a flashlight. On a brighter note, the woman officer who responded was really hot. I feel so safe with you here officer. Oops my bathrobe. I'm going to leave now sir. Not police, but I used to live in an extremely small town. Someone called to report a skunk in their yard. Three fire trucks and an ambulance were dispatched. I'm serious. Also, my next door neighbor sold pot before it was legal in our state. He got into a huge screaming match with his girlfriend. I poked my head out to see what was going on and he was screaming for help and that he was bleeding. Naturally, I called 911, so he didn't bleed to death. The police arrived. He was not bleeding. Later, he admitted he was being a little bee because his girlfriend locked him out. And finally, my grandma's toilet broke and was making noise. She called 911 so they could check the house for intruders. Officer the robbers sound suspiciously like running water, and they smell like crap. Not a cop but our neighbors when I was a kid once called the police on us because we refused to be social with them. Like the police showed up at our house. They were invited in, sat down. Offered drinks and given the very long list of offenses that led to the silent treatment. The list ranged from property damage and animal abuse, to domestic and B&E. They agreed that we probably shouldn't speak to these people. Yes, we called and reported each of these incidents and they had been dealt with to the point that we had officers sitting on the street watching the house. Not a cop, but this reminds me of what happened at my friend's high school. It was a Chicago public school so it wasn't that great for the most part and there were many fights that broke out all the time. A bunch of students one day decided to pull a prank where they pretended a fight was going on. They played two soda cans in the middle of the hall and formed a huge circle around it and started screaming, fight, fight, fight. The security guards came running, breaking their way through the thick wall of kids and found the two soda cans just sitting there on the ground. My dad used to tell a story about a lady who would call into dispatch fairly regularly, weekly or monthly, I forget which, complaining of monkeys overrunning her house. My dad would arrive, of course there were no monkeys the lady had some sort of mental issues, but she would point out where she saw them, and he would dutifully chase them from the house until she said he got them all. Well, one time, as a kid, one of our cats decided to go and stand on my mom's cell phone. She wound up calling 911, and my mom had to stand there and explain that our cat was the one that dialed and it was an honest mistake. No cops were sent. Not a cop, but heard a story from my friend who was one. Someone called for a flock of suspicious birds in their front yard. When he showed up the birds were gone. I'm calling to report a murder, of crows, being loud, in fairness, as a chicken. I can attest that crows use very filthy language. Had a call about a snake in an old woman's yard. Get there and it ends up being a little baby squirrel in the leaves. I put it on a box and take it back to the barracks and named him Squirrelington Banks and gave it to another guy we work with in the same zone. A lot of people know about this squirrel because he got brought to a bunch of nearby places so I don't know if anyone of them are on reddit or not. 
obligatory not a cop, but I work at a bank and we had a guy call 9-1-1 from the lobby and report that he had been robbed because we had been served a garnishment on his accounts and we were not legally able to just give him the money back. Then we got to call the police and say, hey, I know you are getting a call about a robbery at our bank, but here is what is actually happening. Another dispatcher here, lady wanted to report a burg, not in progress, claiming multiple items stolen from her home. It was two cans of Mountain Dew and a box of Cheez-Its. Every day I go to at least one stupid call, a few. Lady calls that her house had been broken into, it hadn't. Her Sky TV box had gone into standby mode and she thought someone had broken in and messed with it. Man called because his sister drank his last beer. Woman calls because she saw a black man walking past. I told her to call back only if he murders her. Man called because he had his big toe stuck in the bath tap. What I'm sure would qualify. I was at the store when my dog escaped. Tried to play with the neighborhood kids, knocked one down, and when they tried to put her back in the house they set off my alarm. So the police got the alarm and a child bitten by a dog call at the same address at the same time. When I got back, the alarm company called me. I found four cop cars. All that fuss for a pup who wriggled under the fence. She was thrilled with all the excitement. I'm eternally grateful that the kid's mom saw her kid get knocked down and confirmed for the cops there was no biting. I'm certain that rated up there on the stupid meter for them. Time to pay the dog tax. You told a cute story about your dog, so now you have to post a picture of it. Bangladeshi guy working as a trash collector called us and started accusing his two co-workers of stealing all his crap from his locker. The awkward part was he couldn't speak English so he had to get his co-workers, the ones he was accusing, to translate for him. So he said an iPhone. A Samsung Galaxy S something, an iPad and a wad of $500 was missing from his locker. When did he notice they were missing? Yesterday. When did he last see those items? Two weeks ago. Was the lock broken? No he doesn't keep his locker locked. How many people can access the locker room? Locker room is not locked at all. Anyone can walk in. What the frick? I mean really? Anyway we just stand there and listen to him burn probably the only bridges he has for about 30 minutes. As we try to tell him in the most inoffensive way possible that he's really just an idiot and we can't help him. Finally he gets frustrated and just sighs and says thank you officers and walks off. Serious, police officers of Reddit. What do you do when a close friend breaks the law? Do you turn a blind eye or report them? And have you ever had a crazy situation arise from either choice? If it was serious, I would probably submit info for the case anonymously, but I don't know if I could turn them in myself. My best friend from high school is now a cop. The other day, I was super baked while texting him and he asked me what's going on to which I responded stoned out of my mind. Wanna smoke then I remembered who it was too. He just answered with that's the only thing I miss about my life before the force, so I guess he's cool about it, but I probably shouldn't text that to a cop. Pulled over two cars that busted an illegal turn back to back. Second car was a friend that I went to the academy with from another jurisdiction. Let the first driver go with a warning. So I could shoot the crap with him for a little bit. Not going to write both. Not going to write one. Previously, I went with friends out of town to an event. We were staying with one of their friends who lived in that town. Evening rolls around. And some of them started to edge towards a back room with a low table and comfy couches. But were eyeballing me warily. I told them that I wasn't on duty. And I was out of my jurisdiction. Plus I was wiped and was going to sleep in another room. They had the courtesy not to blaze up in front of me knowing my job even though it was their house. So I just removed myself from the equation. Courtesy equals caution. I'm not a cop but recently in my town there was an incident where two officers on duty found their superior and close friend drunk driving. They arrested him and now people want them to leave the force for doing their job. Weird stuff also sorry for poor English. Yay. The thin blue line is a weird thing. If a cop rats on another cop they get burned. I have friends that are law enforcement. Some know I smoke pot every now and then, but they won't come search my house. I also respect them enough to not ever smoke or even carry it on me when they're around. Those same officers won't arrest someone for the same amount of pot I have on me, so it's not just a friend thing. 
It's more of a pointless thing to do. This. I have a friend who is a cop who said if it's weed, unless it is a massive amount, at least 4 ounces, he wouldn't give a ticket if thief we're cooperative. Any other drugs he were busy someone for though. Same guy also said, if somebody can out him in 500 yards, he will let them go. A buddy of mine is a cop. Works narcotics different jurisdiction than other guy. A mutual friend always sent him pics of weed, pounds at a time, that he also posts on his Facebook. He told dealer do not to send it to him and def don't put it on his Facebook. Guy kept doing it so my buddy unfriended him and quit talking to him. It's not that he was doing something illegal, it's just that he was being dumb and rude to our cop buddy. This is actually a question that is asked in, I feel pretty comfortable in saying. A majority of oral board exams. The oral board is generally part of the hiring process, usually following the written test and physical fitness test, and preceding the psychological evaluation, background investigation, physical examination, and final interview with the chief commissioner sheriff. My answer has always gone something like this. I think, among my friends and relatives, there are very very few who would commit crimes of moral turpitude. Those who I would expect to do that I have long ago severed relations with, and I wouldn't have any issue with carrying out my duties with them. In the event that I, for example, stopped a vehicle and found that my own father was driving the vehicle. Drunk. This is a scenario I've been presented with a few times. Comma I would use the discretion afforded me and find him a ride home rather than arresting him. I would, however, tow his vehicle. Were the offense much more serious, I would remove myself from the case and investigation in order to prevent a conflict of interests and the possible compromising of the case. It would be unreasonable to expect me to be able to objectively investigate a serious crime committed by one of my friends or relatives, and it would ruin the integrity of the case in the eyes of judge or jury. That's a freaking good answer, I hope you live up to those words. I had a close friend and co-worker who frequently skirted the line of what was legal moral and I'd give him a word of guidance if he was pushing it, but let it slide because you're always going to know crap about your friends and nobody is perfect. One day I caught him committing a rather serious federal offense and turned him in, no questions asked, he's in a world of crap. Now, not as bad as he should be, his prosecutor and judge were older gentlemen who didn't really understand what he had done. It was a cyber crime. It felt really crappy watching my friend go down the tubes because I turned him in, but it was absolutely the right thing to do and many people are better off because of the decision I made. Not really the same but I played be a pong with an off duty cop. I'm 18 so it's illegal. It was a little awkward when it was my turn to drink. I looked around to see what I should do and the cop told me, chug. So I did. I would guess most cops are cool with letting the little thing slide. Can confirm. Got drunk with FBI agents at 19. If you ain't blowing crap up, it ain't my frickin' problem. My friends know not to screw around in my jurisdiction. I've got a career to think about and a family to provide for. If I am on duty then speeding is about the only thing you would get away with. Anything else and it'd bring another officer in to do what needs to be done and then it'd chew their butt out for putting me in that position. Lucky for me most of my friends have calmed down so it's not really a concern. If a friend confessed that they murdered someone it'd launch the investigation myself. They get the same treatment as anyone else. I arrested my own sister for DUI. Just because we share genes or a close friendship doesn't mean someone gets treated differently from the rest of the public. A true friend knows better than to ever put me in a position where I would be faced with such a choice. Was friends with a cop when I was in school. He let me and people he knew I was friends with get away with a fair amount of crap. Obviously, underage drinking but also drug deals and drunk driving. I honestly was pretty surprised by his leniency, but other cops seemed to act similarly. His partner would follow him in the squad car when he drove my friend's car home when she was drunk driving, and didn't report him for not ticketing her or anything. And officers that knew I was friends with him have also let me off the hook drinking underage and smoking. He never actually witnessed the drug deals. I'm not sure if he would have done something if they occurred in his actual presence, but he didn't care that I dealt in general. That's cool of him, but rather crappy that he had to be so put out. A good friend of mine's dad is a cop. As mine as we would go over to the house and drink in the basement. 
the dad didn't care as long as we weren't driving and made us hand over our keys. Honestly not all cops are bad or hard as is it's that 10% that ruins it for everyone. In reality it's the 90% that don't hold the 10% accountable. I'm an MP so things operate a little differently than regular police. Anyway it depends on the offense. Speeding is whatever. I got better paperwork to focus on. Assuming they weren't driving recklessly as well. I.e. swerving. Smoking a joint off post don't do it around me. Do it on post and they get one warning before I take action. Larcenies. Sex crimes. Murder. Etc. I will take action immediately. I'm not a cop but two weeks ago was an eyewitness to a cop hitting a civilian. Both in cars. The responding officer was a friend of the cop and couldn't do anything due to conflict of interest. The case was turned over to the neighboring county. They called me and I gave my statement over the phone. That's an extremely professional way to handle the situation that protects all parties involved. I'd buy that officer a beer for being an upstanding dude. Speaking for the small stuff. I have a few friends that are cops, all of them just ask that we don't put them in a position where they have to compromise their professional ethics. If you need to smoke a J, don't do it in their face. Just go round the corner. Sure they know you're smoking a J round there, but now they have professional deniability. If you don't respect them enough to not put them in that position, then you're not a good enough friend to them that they should go easy on you. Being former law enforcement on both the federal and Leo I kept my integrity period. I informed my supervisor and chain of command that I would not be enforcing consensual crimes such as prostitution and individual drug use. 20 plus years ago based on the state and federal constitution and not fad politics. I swore to defend the constitution and local citizens not bulls. So when anyone was high I completed the FST and if found to be impaired I booked them for being impaired and not the federal crime, same as alcohol DUI. I once pulled over my former fiance for speeding in my car and gave her the ticket and I paid the fine the next day and she got the points. Oddly enough it didn't cause too many issues since I warned her ahead of time and knew she had a lead foot. With minor crimes, misdemeanors, petty offenses, I'd probably do the same thing I do when an acquaintance or total stranger breaks the law, give them a verbal warning and try to correct the behavior. With felonies, excluding person's crimes, I'd simply cease being their friend. There's no way I'd report them, generally, just like I would likely not report a non-person's crime felony, like schedule 1 stroke 2 drug use possession, if I was off duty. To most law enforcement officers, the term always on duty applies. But this doesn't mean being life's little hall monitor, it simply means being willing, ready, and able to jump into a situation if necessary to save a life. I think most of my co-workers, at least in the departments I've worked for, would have the same mindset. If it involved a person's crime, robbery, domestic violence, sexual assault, etc. Dang right I'd report it. I'd likely confront them and encourage them to turn themselves in first. But if someone was in danger because of their actions, I'd call for a local response on the spot. And no, I've never had a crazy situation arise from this scenario. The closest I've gotten was when I pulled over my partner's neighbor for a minor traffic infraction. He was sitting shotgun and laughed when he saw her license. Gave her a verbal warning because I was already planning on giving her a verbal warning. With most traffic infractions, I know if I'm writing a ticket before I even approach the car, I don't write attitude tickets. As someone who breaks many laws often, with many cop friends, no they don't. They are actually my favorite people to confide in. I have some cop friends. Their universal rule seems to be, drug possession is easy enough to ignore. Any crime that has an actual victim is an automatic turn in. All I've done is smoke pot in front of them so it's no big deal. One of my best friends became a cop last year. He lives an hour away so he doesn't work in my area, but I still refrain from talking about my habits around him. Compulsive masturbation is an uncomfortable subject to bring up. They actually are not. You can legally drive with a blood alcohol content above zero because you may not be impaired by it. You can have alcohol in your system and not be drunk. The law recognizes this. It also draws a line, called driving while intoxicated, where you cannot drive. The law is not black and white, because the issue is not black and white. 
You'll find that happens a lot with the law, and with life. My brother-in-law was making pure blue crystal M for years and I had no clue, he told me to tread lightly but I had no choice to try and arrest him. You're not going to get any honest answers here unless they are very minor offenses or unless the cops really fricked in the head and will admit corruption. If it's a ticket, then I write a ticket. If it's anything more than that I call another officer to deal with it. I don't turn a blind eye to crimes, and for smaller offenses I'm forced to ticket. Otherwise the courts will accuse me of selective enforcement. Frankly a friend is more likely to get a ticket from me than a stranger. Am I the only one who has a problem with these responses? You're a cop. I just if it's your friend or family they're breaking the goddamned law. You should treat them the same as you would treat anyone else. If you'd arrest me for it I expect you to arrest them for it. Frick that conflict of interest bulls your police officer it's not your job to interpret the laws it's your job to fricking enforce them. How do any of you think it's okay to give preferential treatment to specific people? I agree. Personally I think this should be treated like we do in healthcare. Get another person to do the job. Obviously a pulling over a family member friend is different than going to a hospital with multiple people on hand. But if you have a partner they should put the relative under arrest or write the ticket. Also they could call for backup and have the them do the dirty work. Not a cop. But my former neighbors were a sheriff as well as his son who was a deputy that lived a few house down. We lived in the country. They let us ride four wheelers on the street even though it was technically illegal. One time they caught my dad and his friend shoot at a deer during season from inside his truck. Out the window. At a deer in a field. Illegal to do from a vehicle. He let that slide with a warning and a lecture about not doing it again. He knew my dad smoked weed. Didn't care. Basically if it wasn't harming someone he didn't mind. Not a cop, but almost became one. Did several ride along and learned that the cop has a lot of say in who who arrests. We pulled over many people and he let all go other than a DUI. Next cop ticketed absolutely everyone. My friend's stepdad is a cop. Recently, he got a ticket for possession of weed. My friend went to the station and got picked up by his parents. His stepdad knew the officer who arrested him. My friend's older brother is a cop. He's picked us up from parties when we're too messed up to drive, since we were underage. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.